Picture this, two destroyers photographed side by side in the Pacific. One is the USS Kearney. It is an American Arleigh Burke-class destroyer worth $2 billion. The other is China's Type 055, their most advanced surface combatant. One looks like it rolled out of a salvage yard. Orange rust streaks run down the gray hull like waterfalls, paint peeling near the waterline. The other looks museum perfect, polished gray paint without a blemish, not a single rust streak. These photos circulate on social media constantly. The comments are brutal. US fleet is broke. This is what decline looks like. China's surging while America rusts into irrelevance. Most people see these images and draw an obvious conclusion. America's Navy is falling apart, but here's what those photos don't show you. Right now, the USS Kearney is operating in the Red Sea. It is intercepting Houthi anti-ship missiles in one of the most dangerous combat zones on Earth. The crew sleeps less than four hours a night. They've shot down dozens of missiles and drones. They've saved civilian ships from being sunk, and nobody aboard gives a damn about paint. Meanwhile, that spotless Chinese destroyer it probably hasn't left the first island chain in six months. It operates a few hundred miles from home port. When paint fades, the crew brings it back for a fresh coat and propaganda photos. The rust streaming down American warships isn't evidence of decay. It's proof of something China's Navy can't replicate. Global presence, relentless operational tempo, the brutal reality of dominating the world's oceans while competitors stay close to shore. That orange rust running down our destroyers and carriers has a name. The Navy calls it running rust, and it's actually the most visible proof of American naval superiority. Why do $13 billion aircraft carriers look covered in rust when China's ships look brand new? Today, we're breaking down the real story, the chemistry that makes saltwater so destructive, the environmental regulations that changed everything, the impossible choices sailors face daily, and why those orange streaks are actually battle scars of an undefeated fleet. To understand the rust, look at the map. Right now, the US Navy is doing something no other fleet can match, operating in three major hotspots simultaneously. In the Red Sea, destroyers intercept Houthi missiles and drones targeting commercial shipping. Real combat operations, missiles flying, lives on the line. In the Caribbean, carrier strike groups increased presence near Venezuela. This is happening as political instability threatens the region. In the Western Pacific, multiple carrier strike groups conduct freedom of navigation operations through the South China Sea. They are directly challenging China's territorial claims. Three fronts, three oceans, one navy. This is operational tempo. American ships deploy for 200 days or more. Some vessels go 40 to 50 days straight without port. They operate continuously in the harshest marine environments on the planet. Now let's talk about what that environment does to steel. Seawater is one of the most corrosive substances on Earth. When steel gets exposed, even through a microscopic scratch in the paint, an electrochemical reaction starts immediately. Iron oxidizes into rust, that familiar orange-brown material. But here's the critical part that makes rust look so dramatic. Rust occupies roughly six times the volume of the original iron that created it. Think about that for a second. A pinprick of exposed steel can generate a rust bloom the size of your hand. When rain hits that rust, it flows down the hull, creating dramatic orange streaks. One small defect near a deck fitting can create a rust river 20 feet long. The ship might have 99% intact paint, but that one defect makes the vessel look corroded. This is visual amplification. The rust you see is exponentially larger than actual metal loss. Now consider where American carriers actually operate. The Persian Gulf, the tropical Indian Ocean, the South China Sea, the most corrosive environments on Earth. Surface temperatures hit 120 degrees Fahrenheit. UV radiation at equatorial latitudes breaks down paint within months. Humidity stays near 100%. Salt spray coats everything. Chemical reactions roughly double for every 18 degree temperature increase. Ships in the Persian Gulf corrode twice as fast as ships in the North Atlantic. 
Extreme heat plus constant humidity plus concentrated salt creates a perfect storm for corrosion. Here's the comparison that explains everything. The Chinese Navy operates as a green water navy. They patrol near their coastline, within the first island chain. Ships return to port every few weeks. They hose down hulls, they touch up paint. They keep everything pristine for state media photographs. Chinese destroyers are showroom cars. They look fantastic because they don't go anywhere challenging. The U.S. Navy operates as a blue water navy. Ships deploy 6,000 miles from home. They operate for months in the harshest waters on the planet. They can't pull into port for cosmetic maintenance. They can't spare fresh water to wash the hull. American destroyers and carriers are off-road trucks. They look rough because they're actually doing the job. The rust is the price of dominating the world's oceans instead of patrolling your own backyard. But there's another reason American ships look rustier now than 30 years ago. Environmental regulations. In the old Navy, sailors regularly maintained appearance even while deployed. They'd rig scaffolding over the side. They would scrape rust, sand, and repaint the hull while underway. It was called side cleaning dangerous work, but it kept ships looking sharp during long deployments. That practice is now largely banned. The Uniform National Discharge Standards were developed by the EPA and Department of Defense. They regulate what Navy vessels can discharge. The goal was protecting the oceans, but it fundamentally changed ship maintenance. Traditional Navy paint contains heavy metals. Copper prevents marine organisms from attaching. Zinc provides corrosion resistance. Older systems contained lead and chromium. When sailors scrape paint at sea, those metal particles fall directly into the ocean. The EPA banned it. No more over-the-side rust scraping. No sandblasting at sea. No proper paint maintenance during deployment. What's allowed now? Washing with fresh water if the ship has enough to spare, which during deployments they often don't. Light cosmetic touch-ups. That's it. Real maintenance has to wait until the ship reaches port or dry dock. During a typical deployment, that's six to nine months away. So rust accumulates. It spreads. It runs down billion-dollar warships. Not because sailors don't care, but because environmental protection and combat operations are prioritized over appearance. The irony is profound. The Green Navy Initiative created a navy that looks anything but green and clean. Here's what you need to understand about the sailors fighting this battle. There's a tool aboard every ship that sailors hate more than any other. The needle gun. A needle gun delivers thousands of needle strikes per second to chip away rust and old paint. The sound is ear-splitting even through hearing protection. The vibration numbs your hands and makes your arms tingle for hours. Every sailor who served on a surface ship knows the needle gun and everyone has spent weeks of their career fighting rust with this brutal tool. Paint maintenance on a warship is genuinely Sisyphean. It never ends. By the time the stern is painted, the bow shows rust again. If you've ever spent a Saturday morning on the fantail with a needle gun in your hand, or had to yell to be heard over that deafening rattle, sound off in the comments below. Let the civilians know how loud it really gets. Consider the scale. A Nimitz-class carrier is 1,092 feet long with tens of thousands of square feet of exposed surface. Deck fittings everywhere, antenna mounts, weapon systems. Each bolt, seam, and joint is a potential corrosion starting point. And here's the problem. The Navy faces chronic workforce shortages, particularly in junior enlisted ranks. The bosun's mates and deck personnel who do maintenance work a Government Accountability Office report found 63% of ships surveyed said workforce shortages made at-sea repairs extremely difficult. Modern warships require sailors to operate sophisticated radar, weapons, electronics, and combat systems. The Navy can't spare dozens of people to scrape rust when those sailors are needed to maintain combat technology. This creates an impossible choice. Put yourself in the shoes of a department head aboard the USS Kearney in the Red Sea. Missile alerts sound multiple times daily. Your crew sleeps four hours a night if lucky. Everyone is exhausted. You must decide how to use limited manpower. 
Option A, send sailors with needle guns to scrape rust and look presentable. Option B, use those sailors to maintain radar and prep missiles. Ensure the ship can defend itself when the next threat appears. What would you choose? The answer is obvious. Combat capability wins every time. The Navy even has a phrase for this now. Lethality overlooks. Official policy has shifted. Appearance is secondary. Combat readiness is everything. Those rust streaks on the USS Kearney aren't neglect. They're evidence the crew prioritized staying alive over looking good. And that's exactly the right choice. Here's what the rust actually proves. China has three aircraft carriers. The United States has 11. China's carriers barely leave their coast. American carriers operate in three combat zones simultaneously. China is building a fleet that looks impressive in propaganda videos. America operates a fleet that dominates the oceans. The strategic math is brutal and unforgiving. To maintain global presence, to respond to crises anywhere within days, to deter multiple adversaries at once, you need ships actually out there doing the mission. And ships constantly deployed in the harshest environments get rusty. That's physics. That's chemistry. That's reality. The annual cost of corrosion to the Navy is $3.2 billion. Real money fighting a real enemy. But what's the alternative? Pull ships back so they stay pretty? Reduce deployments so paint lasts longer? Let China and Iran operate freely because we're worried about appearances? The rust is the price of presence. And presence maintains American power. When you see a rusty American destroyer next to a pristine Chinese ship, you're not seeing American decline. You're seeing American commitment. That rust means the ship is deployed where needed, not sitting safely in port. It means the crew operates in the most challenging environments, not avoiding them. It means sailors choose mission over cosmetics every day. Running rust is called running for a reason. It's rust actively flowing because the ship is actively operating. China can make ships look perfect for photos. They can't make ships show up in three oceans when crises erupt. They don't have the logistics. They don't have the experience. They don't have the capability. American ships look rough because they're doing things no other Navy can do. So why do American warships look rusty while Chinese ships look brand new? Because American ships deploy where needed in the harshest environments for months at a time, 6,000 miles from home because EPA regulations prevent at-sea maintenance, because sailors choose combat systems over cosmetics, because global presence requires relentless tempo, because resources go to lethality, not appearance. The rust isn't weakness, it's proof of strength. Visible evidence of global presence, relentless operations, and brutal choices required to maintain naval power. China can match our paint jobs, what they can't match is 200-day deployments, sustained operations across three oceans, the logistics tale for global presence, the institutional knowledge from decades of continuous worldwide operations. As threats multiply, American ships will get rustier. More deployments mean more corrosion. And that's exactly how it should be. The fleet isn't a showpiece. It's a working tool of national power. Tools get worn from use. Those orange streaks streaming down the USS Kearney and every deployed warship aren't signs of neglect or decline. They're proof that when the call comes, when missiles fly, when threats emerge, American sailors are there. Not in port polishing paint, but on station, doing the mission, protecting shipping lanes that feed the global economy. The rust is real, the commitment is real, and the capability is unmatched. So here is the question. Would you rather have a pristine fleet that looks good in a parade or a rusty fleet that dominates the Red Sea? So let China keep their shiny ships in the harbor for the cameras. We prefer ours rusty, dirty, and downrange. Where the fight actually is, let me know your verdict in the comments. And if you want the brutal truth about military engineering, not the recruitment brochure version, subscribe to the channel. Rust is the price of presence and presence is what keeps promises.